Hello everyone, my name is Wu Chi. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at KIA Global Research Institute, also known as KGRI. KGRI is part of the KIA University effort in becoming leading international institution that promote interdisciplinary research and also actively sharing our results within and outside Japan. So KGRI, in KGRI there are three initiatives, security, creativity, and longevity. I belong to the longevity initiative. Under the regulation of the regulation of aging and aging associated diseases through optimal nutrition work group. Physically, I'm attached to the Department of Physiology at K University School of Medicine, one of the most established neuroscience and regenerative medicine laboratory in Japan, headed by Professor Kano Hideyuki. Without further ado, I am excited to walk you through one of my research projects entitled Astrocyte Dysfunction in the Pathogenesis of Parkinson's Disease. So some of you may think that aging is a natural process, so it should not be a concern. Well, indeed it is true, but they are actually variables. So aging process is affected by both environmental factors and genetic factors randomly and uncontrollably. So when this process went beyond our control, normal aging process may develop into neurodegenerative diseases. Yes, we have some drug that can alleviate the symptoms, or we do have some health management program or life prolongation program that, for example, we can take some antioxidant or we can take care of our diet, or we do have some stem cells program that can, we're tr that can try to slow, decelerate or reverse some of the defective cellular process, including oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, protein dyshomeostasis, impaired DNA repair, and also decreased tissue regeneration. But unfortunately, in some of the individuals, still the aging process progress into neurodegenerative diseases. And we wonder why. So let me quickly introduce you some quick facts about Parkinson's disease because this is the topic of my presentation today. So there are 5 million people affected by Parkinson's disease worldwide, and in Japan, we have 127,000 individuals. So the symptoms are diminished smell, tremors, muscle rigidity, depression, and apathy. Some of the pressing problems about this disease is that we don't know what is the cause of the disease. Okay, there's no cure. We have some palliatives, but it's not a cure for Parkinson's disease. And 85% of Parkinson's disease patients, they are over the age of 65 years old. And this suggests that aging is a risk factor for Parkinson's disease. Because most of the Parkinson's disease patients, they are overrepresented with the degeneration of dopaminergic neuron. So most of, the, most of the studies that investigated the pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease have been neuron-centric. But in the central nervous system, besides neurons, we do have gliosols. Glial cells that include astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, and microglia. In fact, emerging evidence actually show that glial cells, they're, they're the key players in neurodegenerative disease, and they should be the prime target for therapy. In the postmortem tissues of Parkinson's disease, brain sections, so we the gliosis, excessive gliosis, and also reduced number of astrocytes were observed. So one thing very interesting about astrocytes is that it could be neuroprotective or it could be neurotoxic, depending on the conditions, and that affects neuron. So for that, I'm particularly interested in investigating whether astrocytes in Parkinson's disease patients, they fluctuate with this split personality to be good or to be bad, and that contributes to the pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease. So we all know that there are limited studies on generating the astrocytes, or specifically human astrocytes, efficiently. And we all know that it's very difficult. 
However, our group has overcome all the hurdles. We identified three important astroflight inducing factors, and we have successfully trans-differentiated iPS-derived neuroepithelial cells into induced astrocyte cells. And by using a lentiviral-based trans-differentiation system, I have generated astrocytes, or induced astrocytes, which I will call IA cells from now on, from both healthy individuals and Parkinson's disease patients. And for this study, the Parkinson's disease patient cell lines carry either PAK2 mutation or PINK1 mutation. In the studies, they actually show that the mitochondria or of Parkinson's disease derived neuron, they exhibited abnormal morphology. So I thought it is irrational to first assess whether the morphology of mitochondria in PD-derived Parkinson's disease derived IA cells are normal or not. So I stained the IA cells for GFAP and TOM20. GFAP is a canonical marker for astrocytes, while TOM20 is a mitochondria marker. So as you may notice that in the normal cells or normal IA cells where the mitochondria were tubular and elongated, whereas in the patient cells, the mitochondria appear relatively shorter and fragmented. I quantified the average mitochondrial length, and I found that indeed the mitochondrial length of the mit average mitochondrial length in patient Parkinson's disease derived IA cells, they're significantly shorter compared to control. And I also observe a change of distribution of mitochondrial length from mainly tubular and elongated to the appearance of fragmented mitochondria. And based on the observation of mitochondria fragmentation, that prompted me to ask whether these mitochondria are functional or not. So to answer these questions, I treated the cells with mitotracker debris. It's kind of dye that it can only be accumulated in living cells when the mitochondrial membrane potential is intact. So what happened here is that we can see that in normal cells, we can see a normal retention of mitotracker dye. But you can see that the IA cells carrying either pink one or PAK2 mutations, they're less efficient in return in dye retention, which, which suggests that there could be a partial loss of mitochondrial membrane potential. Now, mitochondrial damage, like what I have suggested, I've shown to you just now, whether mitochondrial fragmentation or mitochond loss of mitochondrial membrane potential, so both processes can actually lead to the production of reactive oxygen, the reactive oxygen species, ROS when they exit certain threshold. So then I investigated the level of ROS in these cells and found that there is a significantly increased level of ROS in Parkinson's disease derived IA cells compared to the control cells. So based on these three aberrant phenotypes, mitochondrial fermentation and loss of mitochondrial membrane potential, an increased level of growth, it is conceivable to, to conclude that for Parkinson's disease derived IA cells, they may contain a constant pool of damaged mitochondria. So this damaged pool of mitochondria under normal conditions, they should be removed from the cells through a cellular process called mitophagy. But in Parkinson's disease, patient derived cells, that's carrying mutation, PAK2 mutation and PINK1 mutation. So these proteins regulate the mitophagy process. When you have mutations in this protein, so we would expect there would be disruption in the mitophagy process that lead to the accumulation of damaged mitochondria. And this damaged mitochondria can actually serve as a damage associated molecular pattern. And that is suffice to actually activate or trigger the assembly and activation of NLRP3 inflammasome. NLRP3 inflammasome is a very severe inflammatory process that can evoke apoptosis and also excessive immune response. 
But to further substantiate my hypothesis of the involvement of NLRP3 inflammation in, in activation in, in neural degenerative processes, so there is, this is a recent study published two days ago that, that, I, that the authors actually reported that NLRP3 inflammation activation drives tau pathology. So they found that NLRP3 expression is expressed in microglia surrounding neuron that with tau aggregation. And they found that um, it, in the, with the loss of NLRP3, it actually reduced tau pathology and it impairs cognitive, it prevents cognitive decline. So to confirm whether NLRP3 is activated in Parkinson's disease-derived IA cells, I stain the cell for NLRP3. And two observations should tell whether NRP3 is activated or not. First, you can see the dashed circle line, so that's for NRP3 puncta. So first is the presence of puncta. Second is the localization of the NRP3 puncta to the perinuclear space. And here we can see that specifically in the patient's derived cells, we see the upregulation of NRP3 puncta and the localization of puncta to the perinuclear space. And this actually suggests to us that NLRP3 inflammation is activated or was activated in Parkinson's disease derived cells. I further confirm my observation using postmortem brain tissue sections of Parkinson's disease patients. So I examine the expression of GFAP and NLRP3 through immunohistochemical state, uh, chemistry. And I found that near the substantial nigra, the midbrain region of the, of the brain, I found the specific um, reduction of um, and GFAP positive cells and also enhanced NLRP3 inflammation signal in the region. Now, this is a, so I'm seeking to verify this data in more brain tissue sections, as this is a very important piece of evidence that tells the activation of NLRP3 inflammation in the pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease. In summary, so at this end, so through in vitro modeling of Parkinson's disease by using induced astrocytes, I actually found that I found mitochondrial fragmentation in Parkinson's disease derived IS cells, the partial loss of mitochondrial membrane potential, increased ROS level, endogenous activation of NLRP3 inflammation activation and parking-mediated ubiquitination of NLP3. Based on the current findings, I hypothesize that in healthy cells, the parking-mediated ubiquitination is essential in inactivating NLP3 inflammation in response to cellular damage. For cellular damage, for example, the accumulation of damaged mitochondria, so they can actually induce NLP3 inflammation. So in patient cells, where there is a loss of function of parking, now unleash the assembly and oligomerization potential for NLP3, which then leads to NLP3 inflammation activation and excessive neural inflammation. Well, I'm greatly indebted to the people listed here for their guidance and also their support. So that's all for my presentation today, and thank you very much for your attention.